Hi, you're with Lucy from Archet Angel, and today I'm going to show you how to create this lovely watercolour orchid. Please join me. Let's get started. So that you can download all the files of this on my website, there's a link in the description. Before we go any further, if you like my videos, please make sure you click the like button and also subscribe. That would be great, there's lots more coming. Now the colours that I've used in this are the um, colours from the White Knight set and it's Quinacritone Magenta. I'm also going to use some Ultramarine Blue, which I'm going to mix into the um, magenta as well to give us a little bit of a purpley pink color this orchid um, we're going to do it quite simply so it's not very hard to do and um, we're also going to do it step by step so the first thing I'm doing is wetting the petal so when you're wetting the petal you just want to make it nice and wet but you don't want to have a puddle so you just want nice even water on your paper now I'm using Arsh's paper and it's really quite nice to use so when I add the color I'm only adding a little bit at a time I'm definitely not dipping my brush back into water I'm just picking up my paint the reason for that is I don't want to have too much more water I don't want to end up with a puddle and I don't want this to end up with blooms so I'm just taking the color and lightly adding it it's nice and moist the paper so I don't have any trouble with getting harsh lines and I'm just going to spread it around till I have it exactly how I want it. Um, just a little tip, don't over brush here and brush very lightly. I'm just doing, doing it so I can get the colour. So I'm looking at my picture and I'm looking at where the pinks are and where the purples are and where the darker areas are on the petal so it's just a matter of looking at your picture I can see that there's lines within those petals so I'm trying to emulate some of those lines now I'm going to go through and I'm going to speed through the rest of them and that's so you can see what I'm doing but it's pretty much the same in each one just make sure you take your time it's only those two colors the quinacritone magenta and the um, ultramarine blue and they're mixed together now just before I go into the speed you can see where I want the petals to be darker I'm just adding more paint but I'm not adding more water I'm making sure that my brush is only damp when I pick up the paint so let's keep going You'll see that I alternate my petals so that I don't end up with bleeding. So if you do your petals one next to each other, you may get colour bleeding from one into the next. So alternate your petals so they have a little bit of time to dry. So now that I have my, lead, my petals dry, 
I am going to do the center of the flower. Now, this is really important that we get, just have a look at the colors that we're using. So that really deep part of the flower is, a, basically it starts with a yellow, but it has a red or a magenta in the top of it. So I'm, just so that I'm getting that depth of color, I'm doing my red first, and then I'm dropping the magenta into it so that I get a really nice sort of, um, deep sort of orangey color. Now I'm going to do this in a couple of different layers. Um, I'm also taking that deep magenta um, and yellow just down the middle of the flower there. So the pictures, as you can see the picture, it's quite bright on the inside. So you can add a little bit more magenta and that really gives it that depth. And at, later on when it's dry, I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue and some purple in there as well but I am going to let it dry um, if you do it when it's wet you'll end up with making it a little bit too runny so what I'm doing now is I'm just giving a wash of yellow because you can see that there's a lot of yellow showing through at the front of that flower so I'm putting the yellow through and I want that to dry a little bit before I put the other colors over the top because I want it to have that little bit of a glow so the whole flower is now starting to look it just needs to have some darker areas so you can see here i'm just adding that dark color to the side and i'm starting to put a little bit of detail in now so the flower has some shadow areas and i'm putting that in and i'm basically just using my um same mix of colors so the um quinacritone magenta and my ultramarine blue. I am going to mix a nice gray in a moment with my um, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue because that makes a terrific gray. So I'm just putting in all the colors. So I'm putting this yellow here. That's cad yellow, what I'm using. It's a nice sort of deep yellow and it gives a real nice look to the front of that. The yellow that I used on the other part was just a lemon yellow, but you could just use a, a, a um, lighter version. You can see here, I'm trying to put some dark in there. It's a bit too soon. You do need to let it dry a little bit first. So I'm just doing all those little bits to that central part of the flower. And I'm now going to add some orange to it. Even though it has all those little lines, there's a definite hint of orange underneath it. So I'm just putting a little bit of the quinacritone magenta over the top of the yellow so that I've got that color for it to shine through. It's always worth waiting for some things like this to dry before you go further because you can see whether you've got the depth of color that you want. And because obviously watercolors always dry a little bit lighter than they were when you put them down. So you can see here, I'm doing a layer where I'm putting the quinacritone magenta. I've made it a little bit creamier this time, but my underneath is still a little bit wet. So you can see that it's, it's um, all bleeding together, but that's nice because I'm getting a deeper color there. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of my purple and I'm just going to put a little bit of purple where I see darker areas in the flower. And once I put the magenta back over the top, that will give me a little bit more shape. So adding those darker areas, you can see I'm adding that purple into the inside of the flower so that it looks like it's darker. And it's, it's kind of like a little tunnel sort of shape. So you want it to be dark in that inside area. So now I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to put some detail on my flowers and I'm again using a mixture of quinacritone magenta and also my purple so that I can create beautiful um, shape to these petals. Now you can see there when I ended up with a hard line a way of getting rid of our hard lines is to to wash our brush dab our brush off and then run our brush along the edge. And you can see how nice and, and soft and blurry that edge is. Those petals are already dry, so I don't have to worry about 
them um, bleeding with the colors underneath and I can easily paint this next layer over the top and that's what the beauty of watercolors is we can glaze these next colors right over the top and you can see here I'm doing that technique that I was just talking about wash my brush then I'm dampening it and the important thing is here is not a soaking wet brush. So don't put your brush in your water and then put up a big blob of water on your page. Here I'm starting to put some of those lines that you see in, your, um, in the petals. So I'm being really, really gentle. Again, putting some color there. I want depth of color, dampen my brush, clean it. And you can see here we've done that and we've ended up with a nice smooth edge now if you do that you really must 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 um why just wipe your brush off but then just do one stroke and then rewash your brush because if you keep on going over the same spot obviously you're going to keep moving paint around and this is so that you can actually get a softness to your paint so i'm going to um, go around and do all my petals like this with this um these lines and the lines are, I'm doing a mixture again of the purple and the pink. And again, alternate around so we don't have any problems with bleeding. And just go through and add those shadows and those light lines over the top. Now it's time to add some depth of color to the center of that flower. So I'm using quinacridone magenta and it's quite thick. I've hardly got any water with it and that's so that I can get these nice dotty lines. And those lines are kind of little dots and joined bits that um, all collect together to make that center of the flower really stand out. So brightening the yellow making sure you know putting a bit of blue in there to, uh, to make some shadows now you can see that the flower is starting to really have some texture and design sorry about my video coming out of um, focus a little bit i don't know what i've got going on with my focus but i will fix that for the next video so you can hear here I'm just putting the final lines on my flower it's it's meant to be a subtle one so I'm not going to go over the top this is a beginner's flower so I don't want to make it too complicated um, I'm putting a little bit of yellow okay I just feel like it needs a little bit of yellow through it there's not a lot of yellow in the actual flower but 
I just thought the bit of yellow just gave it a bit of brightness and livened it up a little bit. So I hope you enjoy this and give it a go. I'm also going to put a little bit of a background behind it because I think it needs just the slightest colour. So I've just put the little bit of branch behind it because they kind of join on these link, linked branches. And now what I'm using is just a bit of the golden yellow. And I'm not filling the whole background. I'm just giving it a bit of colour before. I love green and purple and yellow together. So I'm just going around the flower, leaving a little bit of a white edge behind. And then I'm dropping in some of this bright green into there as well. It's kind of a real earthy, um, sort of leafy green. And I'm just dropping that in, going around, not trying to make it too dark, but I do want to be able to see it. So that's pretty much the flower. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos. I will be doing more watercolor videos, mixed media videos, and lots of other things in the near future. Oh, and you can also add some salt at the end just to give a nice little texture to that background. Keep it subtle. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for being with me. Bye. Thank you very much. You're with Lucy.